Good morning or good afternoon. I guess it could be. Yeah, we know. <laughs> How is everybody doing? Can you all hear me loud and clear? Give me a shout out of one or two. Okay, good. Awesome. Thank you, Will. How are we doing? Feels like just last night we were in class, huh? <laughs> Welcome out to Coach's Corner. My name is Tony Benson. I'll be your guide for the next hour or so. Is it really? Uh, I totally forgot to look back at that. <laughs> we'll go look at it here in a minute as soon as we get through this. Will's reminded me of one we looked at the other night, Wednesday, in the, the Patterns of Flash class. So good morning, Helen. How are we doing, good Robert? Kevin? Good to see you all. Let me get the disclaimer up there since so you can all see that if you haven't seen it before. We are not registered broker-dealers investment advisors. We'll not give you any recommendations or advice. Everything that we do here is purely for educational purposes. For regulatory reasons, we do not discuss live funded trading. So anything we talk about with regards to trade, just assume that it is a practice trade or a paper trade. So do a quick review of all this stuff coming up. Trading news coming up, uh, that's this Monday, the 19th with yours truly. So I'll be doing trading you Monday night. Uh, Monster Market Movers, oh, that's August 5th as well. Every two weeks, basically, right? Monster Market Movers uh, is the 22nd. And then Patterns of Flash, the class we just did last Wednesday, uh, is coming up uh, July 28th and then August 11th as well. We do that basically every two weeks, twice a month we do that. Um, and that is for Patterns of Flash subscribers. So if you have that tool already, uh, then you get two hours a month with me basically on a one-hour class, kind of like we're doing here. Uh, we'll talk about whatever we want. Usually I go find a pattern that's uh, happening in the market. We look at specific trades, and that's where Will is talking about Slumber Jay, where we looked at it the other day. Now you got me curious. Uh, and then Inner Circle is August 12th. And then, of course, the Mastermind Group is on Tuesdays. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Free online workshops. You see the Power Hour. Uh, and then Coach's Corner, as we're doing today, is every Friday. And How to Trade the Market. And then, of course, you've got the Power Option Plays Tuesdays and Saturday. And Cover Call Explorer. And then uh, Brandon's E-Mini Think Tank. So that is what is up and coming. Of course, you can follow us on all the social media sites. And then uh, one more thing, give Rob a good little promo. He is doing a live. You notice it says live up there. A live in New York, Saturday night. Oh, wait, wrong class. Uh, <laughs> only 99 bucks for an all-day trading. That's a pretty killer deal. So, And with Rob, of all people. So uh, there we go. Perfect. Thank you, Amy. Uh, so here's what we're going to talk about today as you probably saw in the headline, is role reversal. And this is something that, um, for those of you that have had Patterns of Flash, you know about this already. If you haven't, uh, would suggest checking it out. There is a whole lesson in there about this. Uh, and it is, frankly, it's probably one of the most important pieces of technical analysis, in my opinion. It's something I use all the time. I mean, day in and day out, whether it's swing trade, day trade, does not matter. Uh, what we're going to do is we'll go through it here real quick. And basically what we'll talk about is the underlying psychological reasons why it happens. And then we're going to go over and look at charts. I'm watching for a role reversal right now as we speak. Uh, <laughs> so what is role reversal exactly? Essentially, it's where old support becomes new resistance, right? If you've been around the market for more than about five minutes, you've probably heard that said before. Old support becomes new resistance or vice versa, right? Old resistance becomes new support. Well, there's a very good underlying deeper psychological reason that this phenomenon, if you'll call it, takes place. To me, it's just normal. It's just, it's the way humans operate, right? We're emotional people and we make decisions emotionally. And what we've got to do, learn to do as traders is to manage those emotions well. And I think role reversal and understanding it at a deeper level is important to understand not only how the market functions, but we as individuals function, right? And learn how to combat it, work against it, not let us basically work against us. So what happens, right? If a stock drops off and finds the support, it bounces, right? 
Well, then you've got people that bought the stock at the support level. They're all happy, right? Except that what they do is they bring out the woulda, shoulda, coulda syndrome and say, I should have bought more. So now they want an opportunity to buy some more, right? They want to accumulate a profitable position. The shorts, anybody that shorted it is on the wrong side, right? So they're upside down because they've sold it to open. So now they're losing money. So they're not happy. And then those that didn't get in are kicking themselves for not buying because they saw the support level. They thought it was support, but they got scared, right? <laughs> can anybody relate with any of these situations here? Because I can relate to all three of them. <laughs> and if you've been trading for more than about you know, a few months, uh, if you've traded anything with funded money, you've probably experienced every single one of these situations, right? Where you bought it at support and you were happy or you, it bounced on support and you picked it up and it went up and you were ecstatic, right? Or you shorted it or you bought puts, you played the downside and it went against you and all of a sudden you're upside down and you're like, ah, and you're kicking yourself. Or you just sat on the sidelines and didn't get in and now you're wishing you would have been in. So what do you do now? You wait for another opportunity. You say, well, okay, if it comes back to the support level, then I'm going to buy. So lo and behold, what does it do? Pulls back to the support level. Now you're excited. All right, it came back. It didn't take off without me. Because you've probably experienced that before, right? Where you didn't get in, it took off. And then you say, okay, if it pulls back, I'll get in. And it didn't pull back. It just took off and kept running. Like Slumberjay. <laughs> hey, Brenda. And, uh, and Apple. There's a lot of them. I mean, what are the realities? And this is one thing that is, is difficult about trading. You're always going to miss trades. I don't care how good you are, how good you get. I've been at this for over 20 years and I miss trades all the time, all day, every day, especially day trading. And even swing trading, it's just a slower process, but you miss trades all the time. It's, it's just part of the deal. And it's hard, it's hard sometimes to swallow because you look at it and you go, oh, I should have gotten into that. I should have traded, I should have bought it, should have traded it. The one thing you've got to work against is that woulda, coulda, shoulda syndrome. It's, it's, a, it's a tough one. It really is because you kick yourself. For example, I mean, Oracle yesterday. I don't know if any are day traders or if you looked at it or you saw it, but I got into it and made a healthy chunk of change in like 20 minutes, but I would have made three times as much had I just held on for another 10 or 15 minutes because it just tanked. Like when I say tank, I mean three bucks in 25, 30 minutes. And I got on that ride in almost a perfect spot. But I scaled out of it piece by piece. And I should have done it a little bit differently. But I learned a lesson and I used the, what I learned later in the day and actually added some profit to other positions by doing it. So it was a well-learned le lesson. But getting back to this. So now it's pulled back. And now you were all excited about buying. And now you buy in. Because you missed the first time. Now it's giving you another opportunity. So you get in to the trade there at support. Now you're all excited. You're in the trade. You're also nervous, right? It's always that mixed position. And then lo and behold, what happens? It breaks support. And now you start to get nervous and freak out, kind of panic, right? You're like, ah, nobody wants to lose, right? I can't be a loser. I got to win. Every time I got to win. And if you don't have a stop, then you hold on, right? Some of you put stops in there, a hard stop, or some of you have the discipline to pull the stop if it hits your alert and it hits out and you get out and you say, okay, I'm gonna take my loss. Might create some margin calls for some folks. If you get too leveraged and you have too much use of margin and you're underwater, then you may have to close it out. So you may have to sell for that. So all of that stuff starts to create selling pressure. Not to mention that breakout traders like myself will put orders down below support so that if it breaks the support, then I'll sell it short to open it, which creates more selling pressure, right? So you've got this kind of a, I don't know if I call it a perfect storm, but you have a situation where a lot of people are selling and getting out when it breaks the support level. And so it gets worse and worse and worse. And you sit there and you start to panic and, well, I was going to get out. And then you look for new support levels and you look for new excuses, if you will, to stay in the trade to hang on because God forbid we take a loss. <laughs> I mean, nobody wants to lose, right? And the shorts are happy, of course, and they add to their position. 
or they enter the position like I would do. I love trading the downside. I mean, I'll, I'll take any side, whichever way it's moving. As long as it's moving, I'm good up or down. But yesterday was a perfect opportunity to take advantage of some short selling or buying puts, whatever you're doing. Swing trading, I use options. My day trades, I use stock. It's just cleaner, easier, and quicker. But yesterday was, I did a lot of this where stuff was hitting support, it bounced at support, and then it would crack support. And I had an order below that support level that said, get me in or add to the position. So I was doing this exact thing and I do it pretty much on a daily basis. So I'm added to position, entering a short position, and it creates that selling pressure. And if you're long, you bought the stock, you're holding on to it, and you're starting to panic a little bit, right? And those that haven't gotten in, and now we've flipped the coin over, right? Before, when it bounces support and you missed the trade, those that didn't get short in this position, and I don't know if I said this yet. If I did, if I did already, forgive me for repeating it, but this works on the flip side too. You can flip this thing upside down. And it's the same thing. Whether it's breaking down or breaking above, it doesn't really matter. It works, it works both ways. That's the beauty of charting. It works both ways, essentially. But if you wanted to short the stock and you didn't get in, now you're looking for the opportunity to actually get in, which this happens to me a lot too, where it breaks down and I miss it for whatever reason. And then I'm looking for the role reversal. In fact, it's almost in a lot of ways better because the more conservative place to get in is when it actually rolls back up and retests that support level and it actually uses it as a role reversal point and then rolls over. So I'll use either spot. I'll use the aggressive place to enter the trade is on the break of the support. Because sometimes they have false breakouts, right? Sometimes a, a stock will break a support or a resistance and then turn right around. JD did that to me yesterday. It broke through a support level, made a new low for the day. So I got in the trade, I shorted it, and then all of a sudden turned back around, broke back up and broke back above the old support level. So I had to exit and take a loss on it. That happens. So the more conservative place to enter is actually when it rolls back up or, if, or a support thing, same thing. The more conservative place is to wait for the role reversal. But how many of you experienced that time where you didn't get in and it just took off and ran without you? And you waited and waited for it to come back and it never came back. So the, the one of the ways, and this is maybe a little tweak for some of you, if you haven't heard this before, the way that I like to trade, because I'm a conservative trader, but I'm also very aggressive. What I mean is that in the aggressive place to enter, like right here where we see this arrow. In fact, let me grab my pen here real quick. If I can find it, where did it go? There it is. Right here where this arrow is, right in this area, right as it breaks support, that's a very aggressive place to enter. Because what if it is a false breakout? Then boom, it stops you out, just like JD did yesterday. But I was willing to take that risk. The more conservative place is when it bounces up here. We'll get to this. But if it comes back here and, and then it actually tests this support and it proves that it, it, it uses it as resistance and then it starts to fall, this would be the more conservative place to enter. Because now we've got more confirmation here. Okay, we broke it here. There's no confirmation yet that this support, this old support level is going to act as resistance here. Once it rolls back up here and uses it as resistance again and starts to dance and proves that it's not going to stay above there and starts to move back down, now you've got confirmation that that support level is valid or what now becomes resistance. So this is the conservative place to enter. This is the aggressive place to enter. What I love to do is pick up a small position right here. Say I'm going to build a thousand share position. I might put an order right there just on the break of the support, just below the support for maybe a couple hundred shares. One, two, three hundred shares, depending on how strong it looks. If it looks like it will be a good breakout and it may take off to the downside, I might pick up four or five hundred shares. If I'm a little skittish, if I'm like, eh, if there's some indication, some signs that it's not that great of a, may not be that great of a breakout, may give me a false breakout, then I might only do a hundred shares. And then if it drops... And it continues to fall, then I'm upset if it just drops and doesn't come back. If it doesn't bounce back up here and it just falls off a cliff, like Oracle did yesterday, am I upset or am I okay? I'm okay because I'm there, right? And that's the balancing act between, you know, that's the thing that we all have to deal with is fear, right? And what's the fear? The fear is that we're going to miss the trade. If we don't get in, it just takes off without us. So we get into trades when we shouldn't get in because of fear. We get out of trades. You stop out of trades 
when you panic and get out because you're scared. And then it immediately turns and goes the other way, right? <laughs> I had to day trade do that yesterday. I mean, I was like, ah, I literally hit the high, stopped out. I was a little bit beyond my stop. I was like, I should have stopped out. I'm going to stop out now. Just take my hit. It wasn't horrible anyway. But then it turns around and tanks. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> it's frustrating, but welcome to trading, right? So by trading, very aggressive, but doing it with less risk, very, very minor risk, very small risk. So I enter the trade in an aggressive place to enter, but I do it with minimal risk. And then if it comes and gives me an opportunity to add to it here, then I may, if it rolls over, especially if it looks strong, I may add to the position, take a full position here. And often what happens is I'll get in here, I'll get in right here, right, with a small position. It'll drop really fast. And then I'll take out, you know, if I say 300, there was, I can't remember what it was yesterday. I, I shorted 300 shares. Very similar situation where I put an order. I think I, I shorted 300 shares at the aggressive spot. It dropped off a bit and it started to bounce. It had a little minor support there. So I banked 100 or 200 shares. I took out part of it and waited for it to bounce back up. Thought, well, if it keeps going, then I'll still have a little position there. But if it bounces back up and gives me a roll reversal, uses the old support as new resistance, then I can reload the position. And lo and behold, that's exactly what it did. If I remember right, I shorted 300 at the aggressive place. I closed out 200 of it when it came down and started to stall a little bit. It bounced back up here. It hit the old support. I reloaded it. I can't remember how many. I think I put three or 400 more in. So I reloaded it even more because now I've got a small profit already banked. So even if it stops me out, I'm still going to be about break even. So now I can get in a bigger position as it rolls over and turns back to the downside and hopefully be in a better place here. So you see, it's just a it's just a little different way of thinking, a little different way of tweaking it, basically to maximize the profit opportunity. Is be really aggressive at the or be take a little bit of risk at the aggressive place and then take bigger risks when it's more conservative, right? So moving on. Now it bounces at a support level. It comes back to the old support here. And the longs, if you bought in, if you bought in right here, expecting it to bounce again because of the support, you were underwater, 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 and it got worse and worse and worse, and you held on and held on. And now it starts to come back, and how are you feeling? If you're going on the emotional roller coaster ride with me, if you've ever been there, you know exactly what this is like, right? You buy in, you're all excited because your thought is you're fantasizing about all the money you're going to make when it goes like this, and next thing you know, you're like, uh... And it gets worse and worse and your gut sinks and it starts to churn and you can't sleep at night. And then it bounces a little bit. You're like, oh, whew. and then it comes back down. You're like, oh, no, oh, and right. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing because you know exactly what I'm talking about. Huh? It's an emotional roller coaster, right? Then it bounces back up, comes back up, gets back to here. And you go, whew, now I'm not going to be a loser. I'm going to get out at break even and call it a day. It's probably one or two of you that can relate, right? But I see some of your comments, bear with me. Let me get back to, let me finish this up and then I'll come back and grab all your comments and questions. So there's three different bearish players in this market, right? You got the long-term bearish traders, right? That are maybe short in the stock longer term that are adding to their position, right? They may be in the trade, They may be added to it when it broke support, and now they want to add more to it here because they're looking for a long-term downward move. Trend trader, if you will. Then you've got the breakout type of traders like myself who are just looking to take advantage of a short-term opportunity if something breaks out. Where this is the place where, again, just like, and I do this often, is small position in the aggressive place, and then it rolls back up to the old support and becomes new resistance. And I'll add to it if it rolls over there. That's me. I'm re-entering the trade, right? I'm getting back in at the place where I already have a position. I hopefully already have a little bit of profit in the bank. And now I'm willing to take a little bit more risk because I've got some cushion there. For those people that didn't get in when it broke the support, they're not looking for an entry point, 
right? If you missed the, if you missed the initial move, now you're looking for a new entry point. And knowing that role reversal is a very common phenomenon that takes place because all the people that are long want to get even, so they sell. And then everybody else that sees that support that knows it's probably going to become new resistance, they get into the trade and short it and push it lower, right? So that old support becomes new resistance. And then rinse and repeat, right? Does that make sense? I mean, do you see the, I guess the big question is, do you see the underlying psychology behind it and why it happens? And that's the other thing, and I don't have time to get into it today, but the, the, the um, let me just go there. I think I have it open. So inside, and this is just a shameless plug is all. Inside patterns in a flash, I'll, I'll show you. There's, here's the video. So this is under the basic section, right? Here's roll reversal right there. You can see, there it is. So there's a whole lesson in there, which is very similar. It's basically the same thing that we have here. It's, I mean, it's not a really, really complicated concept, but it's a very important one. And that's one of the beauty is, if, I mean, this whole section of basics is not, none of this is really complicated until you really want to start digging deep into the underlying psychology stuff. And even then it's not that complicated. It's just the way we as humans work, right? But what's interesting is I think it was in this lesson right after it where I had a friend that I went to high school with, well, mostly grade school. And then I think it was sometime in junior high, he moved north an hour or two. So I didn't really see him. I hadn't seen him since high school graduation. Turned out he was in New York and I was going to be there for a workshop. And we ended up meeting up, having dinner. It turned out he worked for a hedge fund. <laughs> and I had no idea. We're sitting there having a meal and he's, you know, what are you up to? You know, I work at a hedge fund. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> here I am trading. It's like, I started picking his brain. We talked about trading almost the entire time. And it was so interesting because here I had all these years heard that, you know, hedge funds are, you know, they're professionals and they're the experts and this and that. And he's explaining this concept along with some other concepts, you know, and the underlying psychology behind it. And that even as traders in a hedge fund working with millions, tens of millions if not billions of dollars, right? He used to have $40 million to just trade at his disposal whenever he wanted. It wasn't his money, but he could place trades on anything, anytime he wanted to. And he was just a normal guy, just like you and me. He's not any smarter, any dumber, nothing. He's just a person. And he's making the same types of decisions and he's describing to me how they're doing, I mean, basically it's the same underlying psychology as you and I have. So this thought that I used to have that these hedge funds, you know, they, they know what they're doing. So follow the hedge funds. Well, <laughs> not really. And when we met, actually it was in, I think it was 2010 after the big crash of 08, right? Where he didn't, he no longer had cash to trade on his own. He had to go and just present his, what he thought were good trades to his bosses because that hedge fund lost 80% of their capital in the crash. So that whole idea that these hedge funds are experts and they know what they're doing is a fallacy. And that whole meal, and I cover that, I go through the whole story in one of those lessons there, but it was, it was really, really interesting to hear from that perspective, to hear from a different side. How they operate and the fact that they're really no different than we are. They're just human beings and they just have a lot more money on the line, that's all. But the underlying, the way he was describing stuff, the underlying emotional, they just I was describing what takes place to us as humans. He was describing the same thing. <laughs> it was really mind-boggling. But let me jump back. Okay, um, I just see some questions, comments. Happens every day, exactly, Robert. <laughs> HD. Let's go look. Uh, in fact, let's go. We'll go here real quick. Oh, that's awesome, Robert. You, so you, you pulled those short legs on two positions and or one. Either way, you came out ahead. That's all that matters. M-U, 
good example of, are we talking about role reversal? That's what we're going to look for here. Micron. And essentially what I want to do for the next about 25, 30 minutes is, well, we'll just look. I mean, you can see it's, it's not hard to find these. I mean, they're that common. And I'll just show you right now. I mean, it's just the first one that I see is, I mean, there's a perfect little role reversal, right? Where's my pen at? So this is the scenario I literally just described is here we've got a support level right here, right? The stocks dropped first thing in the morning, bounced, bounced again, came back up, held here. And then as traders, we look at it and say, okay, is there an opportunity? Is it going to bounce here again? Or is it going to drop? Now I'm looking at this and go, well, the trend itself is down. It was down. The market itself was down yesterday, or at least it was starting to. And I'm looking at going, okay, I want to get bearish on this thing. So I'm looking at it saying, okay, if if it breaks that line right there, I'm looking at getting short on this thing. So sure enough, it breaks. I'd probably pick up a small position that it dances. I'd have a stop right up here, right? It dances around. Long as, long as it doesn't hit the stop, it uses that. Let me clean that up a little. What was support in the morning now becomes resistance here. And boom, sure enough, I mean, sure, it got a little bit above it for just a little bit, but then it dropped off and tanked. I mean, that's 77.20 to, what's that, 76.40. Doesn't seem like much, but that's 60 cents. And if you're day trading and you say you do 500 shares, I mean, you're in it for what, 37 grand? You make 60 cents, that's 300 bucks. That's $300 and that's, you're talking about an hour, hour, hour and a half's worth of risk. Oh, nice, Brenda. I don't think I've, if I've seen that, I don't remember it. It says fear, two acronyms for fear. Face everything afraid and run or face everything afraid and rise. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's good to have, uh, it's it's good to have other um, traders that can talk you off the ledge. Well, the best way to work through the roller coaster rise is, is communicate with other traders. <laughs> you didn't hear that, Brenda. Yes. <laughs> she heard the ding. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, in fact, let's go. I'll show you another. This is, a, this is another role reversal that I've been keeping an eye on. It's actually an inverted head and shoulders. And the neckline is there. I don't know if I have... So if you're not familiar with patterns, let me, I mean, you, I would hope that you are. If you're not, then definitely hit that link inside the chat box and get patterns in a flash because that is what the entire tool is about. But we've got a left shoulder, a head, a little miniature right shoulder, and a run to the upside. And what we're looking for is we've got a breakout, right? We're looking for it to move higher if it's if it breaks out, which it just did. Let me get rid of that pen and we'll look. We might actually want to. This might be a good opportunity to place a little play trade on. Just like, what was it? Was it AMD last time? It just came up. Uh, let me get. Shrink it out a little more. So there's the, what would be the neckline. If I could bring that down, just a couple of pennies is all maybe. And you can see, and this is the beauty. I mean, you can see role reversals everywhere, right? You got a break down here. It uses it as support here, breaks it. It kind of doesn't recognize it there, but then it recognizes it again here. And this is all yesterday, right? So we've got a support level here. It uses it as resistance here, false breakout here. This is where it can get tricky, right? Because if you get in here expecting it to roll over, because you had the support, it breaks the support here. You're expected to roll over, but it doesn't actually roll over. So realistically, what you should do is if you have a situation like this and it runs back up, you should wait for it to break and roll back down here. That your entry point should be right down here. So you wouldn't have gotten in and on this and lost in the false breakout. And then when it comes back down here and breaks down, now you'd be in, right? And then you catch this little move and you'd probably stop out somewhere around here and have just a tiny little profit. Nothing monstrous to write home about, but a little profit's better than no profit, right? Kind of. 
So we've got an inverted head and shoulders. It's building a nice little base. We've got, and this is, of course, this is a five minute chart. So this is intraday and it's literally live. This is, of course, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, this is simulated trading. But that doesn't mean that, well, I can't suggest or even remotely suggest that you should trade it because I'm not saying you should. I'm just looking at this for an example. So the first question is where would I put my stop? And I would put it right there. I'll make this red. In fact, I'm gonna go steal that real quick. Just copy it. And then I'm gonna go over and hopefully that thing doesn't take off without me. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put those lines on there first. So the question is, what's the target? And this is where I'm looking for old support and resistance spots. So that's about a pretty, you see all the different support and resistance right there. So now I'm going to put, we got to stop. We got a target. We got an entry point spot now. Now I'm going to use the calculator. I think we still have that there. 4747 is the stop. The target is 4832. So the entry point should be 47.68. You see there's 21 cents of risk, 64 cents of upside. So we've got three times as much profit potential as I have risk. So now I'm going to go over here and double click this one and make it the right number and then change it to orange. I just color code my entries and exits and targets just so that when I come back, when you look at as many trades as, you know, if you're trading a ton and you're looking at a lot, a lot of different stocks, it's, easier to keep track of what you were thinking or what you're actually trading plan. This is basically a trading plan for me. That's all it is. So I make the stop red so I know where I'm getting out. I make the entry point orange and the target is green. I wanted to make the entry point green, but we got to have green sense for something. So 47.68 and this thing's already, the volume is really, really light, which is not spectacular. I mean, you see it sold off this morning a lot with big volume, but then it bounced very quickly with lots of volume. So will it continue to run higher? Hard to say. Um, I'm not super excited about this. Considering that, the, the, oh man, that the overall market is a little bit weak. We had a big down day. I wouldn't be surprised to see more of a pullback. Oh, you're killing me. Um, so I'm just going to go small. I would normally do between 500 and 1,000 shares on this, but I'm just going to do 300 here because I'm not that excited about the upside. The volume is, is a big red flag. So just a little bit less risk, which basically if I stop out, I got 21 cents of risk. So it's going to cost me 60 or 70 bucks to find out. So 47.68 if it hits. So this is where I'm going to put in order to buy it, put a buy stop. So I'm buying 300 shares of fetch at 47.68 to open. I hit send, it'll throw it on there. There we've got a stop, a buy stop to buy the stock at 47.68. If you're trading options, you wanna, well, this wouldn't necessarily be a swing trade unless you're gonna trade it intraday, but you've only got what, 60 cents of potential. You're not gonna make a whole lot of an option. That's one reason for day trading purposes, I use stock. It's quick and easy to get in and out of. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, oh, can you see it now? Sorry, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that's the other reason, Robert. Robert makes a good point, is that options, especially with a lot of stocks, if they're not super liquid or if they're really volatile, they have big spreads, right? So the slippage, the slippage on options is a lot bigger than it is on stock. You're paying a commission, albeit they're tiny. Commissions are tiny nowadays with options, but you're still paying a commission with stock. You literally trade commission free. There's zero commission, little, little ECN fees, which are basically nil. And the slippage is literally pennies. Unless you're trading one of those crazy volatile stocks that isn't very liquid, but Fetch is a liquid stock. The spread is a penny or two. So. The cues, huh? Let's go look. We'll see if that thing dings off or not. You said it's forming a head and shoulders? Inverted head and shoulders or regular head and shoulders? Oh, hello. We just got hit on that fetch. 47.69. That's weird. <laughs> uh, did you hear that one? 
That's the ding when it trade fills. Inverted head and shoulders. Okay, just make sure. Good eye. See, I know you've I know you've had patterns for flash. Here's what she's seeing. If oh, all right. So there's the inverted head and shoulders that is just forming. The right shoulder is not real big or defined, but it's still there. So the question is, what's going to happen here? Will it go higher? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Should we place a fun trade on it? Actually, you know what? Where is that fetch? What is going on here? Let's see what's happening with this. So here's what I'm gonna do on this. And this is what I this is what I would do in real life is if 4747, I'm just gonna throw a stop in there. So sell the stop to close 4747. So now the order's there. No, I don't have to worry about it. If it drops off and it pulls back, then it's gonna cost me 60 bucks. If it runs and takes off, I got 180 bucks of potential. Doesn't take too many $180 trades. Right, you make three trades where you make 180 and you lose on two. Are you you make? This is why you three to one. If you're not familiar with it, we'll take that trade going back to fetch. Okay, we've got three to one upside. Right, you got 21 cents of risk, 64 cents of upside. If I lose 60 bucks on this trade, and I do three different trades, and if I do another trade where I lose 60 bucks on, and I have one trade where I make 180, where am I at? I'm still up 60, right? So if I'm wrong twice and I'm right once, then I'm still ahead. If I'm wrong on a fourth one, then I'm break even. That's the beauty of three to one. And that's why I use it. I don't have to be right, but 26, 27, 28% of the time. So it really doesn't matter to me. I don't worry about it. That's one reason. And frankly, that's one reason it's a lot easier for me to pull the trigger on trades like this because I don't care. If I lose 60 bucks, I lose 60 bucks. If I make 180, hey, it's a good day. I only need those occasionally. So that is dropping off. So we're going to skip that for a second. And let's see. Why not do an OCO? Are you talking about on fetch? Just curious, Well, On fetch, okay, let's go back to that real quick. Maybe we should just stay there, huh? It is a good example. Why not do an OCO? Um, nothing wrong with that. You could. That's the beauty of this business. You can do it every which way. And I'll show you why. As I <laughs> kill myself some more. And actually, truth be told, this is a lesson I learned just yesterday. And it's something that I've known before. I just never implemented it, especially in you know normal trading. It's, I'm, I'm big into scaling as well, scaling in, scaling out. I started, you start scaling out of a trade, right? Where if you get into a trade and you're up and you're profitable, why not take some money off the table? Not only are you banking some profit, but you're taking risk out of the way, right? And it just increases the odds, which this is an odds business. This is all about odds. You got to put the odds on your side. You put the odds on your side, everything will be fine. Uh, so if you get out of the position piece by piece, then you're maximizing profit, right? I mean, a little bit. And here's one that, an example from yesterday. This is Oracle. I think I mentioned this already, didn't I? So there's a resistance there at 88.62, right? And then looking at, I can't remember where I had the supports and stuff, but let me go look on my other machine real quick and see if I can find it really fast. 
Not that it matters that much. Yeah, that's what I thought, just shy of 88. Yeah, right there. Whoops. Come on. There we go. So here's Oracle, right? And I've got the stop there. I'm just going to. Okay, those are pretty close, actually. Yeah, those are only off by a penny. Those are essentially what I did. So here's what happened is, right? And of course, talk about a paper trade. <laughs> So this 88, it was 88.51 was my entry point. And I'm looking at Oracle and I'm just, this is just the analysis I did. And this is what happened. I'm seeing the resistance level here. It's hit it, hit it. I mean, it hit it a few days ago back here. It's hitting it right here. Right, yesterday or the day before yesterday, it bumped up and hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. And now first thing in the morning, it got down a little bit, but then rallied back up and started to dance around there real quick. So I threw an order in at 88.51. I think it was right there on that candle, that third candle of the day. Oops. Well, what just happened? It went too far. Okay. So this third candle, it bounced back up. 88.51 picks them up, and then it very quickly ran above the stop. I waited to see if it was going to close or not above there, but it very, very quickly turned back around and fell back off, which was a good bearish indication because if it can't hold that level, if it can't stay above that level, which it's already tried, you can see four times yesterday it tried to get above that level. And here we are first thing this morning, the bulls try to take it up there and very quickly the bears just beat them back. Say, no, 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 we're gonna take this down, which is a good bearish indication. And based on that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna double up on my position because I just took a little position. I doubled up on it. And then lo and behold, what happens? Within two minutes, it starts to tank. And it's at 88.20 right there within two or three minutes. I'm like, holy cow, we're already halfway to the target. I mean, my target's 88. I'm looking at plucking 50 cents out of this thing. And you always want it to happen as quickly as possible, right? It was 400 shares. That's what it was. I did 200, then added 200. Oh, Fetch just got hit. Oh, well. And so I was like, I banked part of the problem, right? I sold 100 shares. I sold a quarter of the position. I thought, okay, if it hits here, it's got some momentum, it's moving, the volume is accelerating. I want to leave as much impossible in place as possible, but I'm going to take part of it out just to not only bank some profit, but also reduce my risk. So lo and behold, it does that. And then of course, two minutes later, it's tanking more. It's dropped another 40 cents. Now I'm kicking myself saying I should have held on. And the woulda, shoulda, coulda syndrome kicks in. And now I'm cranky, but I've still got 300 shares there. And then it starts to drop some more and more and more. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to take another 100 out. So I took another 100 out at, I think it was 87.42 or something like that. Or no, 87.70. It was right here. There was a little bit of support from previous history. So I took another 100 shares out. So I got a half a position, right? And I'm up a decent, healthy chunk now. And I'm happy, right? I'm like, cool, keep going. Sure enough, it keeps going. And somewhere about 87.40, I think it was, I pulled out another 100 shares. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to leave the 100 shares there. And boom, it drops all the way off to here to about, it was right about 87. And I actually, I can't remember if I put a stop on there or what I did exactly, but it ended up dropping to, I think it was 86.80. And I got out the other, I sold the other 100. I was like, I'm just going to take it because it's going to bounce here most likely. And lo and behold, what happened? It just kept on tanking. It literally dropped from 88.51 was my entry point. It came down and hit exactly 85.51. That's $3 in one, two, three, four, five, six, what, seven bars, 35, 40 minutes. On a measly 400 shares, that's 1,200 bucks in 35, 40 minutes. I made 359 of paper money, of course, right? <laughs> so here's what I did. I went, why, why am I not putting a stop on it and just pulling the stop down? For example, and I'll just, 
I don't know if I can do that with this or not. I got the buy mark. You know, I'm just going to do this for fun. I just, it's play money anyway. So I'm going to put this order in. Okay. So now I'm going to put a stop on there. I'll show you exactly what I've been doing and watch this. This one will make money just for fun. Here's 775 sell order. So even though it was awesome to make a healthy chunk of change quickly, I mean, it's all relative, right? What de de depends on what it is that it healthy is, right? 500 bucks a day is a pretty good living. Depending on where you live, you live in Seattle, eh, you're getting by. But $1,000, $1,200 in a matter of 30 minutes, that's pretty good. Uh, so what I learned is that it's better to, what I started doing, I should say, is just placing a stop on part of the position. So what I should have done, should have done was put a stop on 100 shares up here at the 8820, just behind it, and let it keep going. And then leave the whole position in place until it stops out that 100 shares. The small part, right? And then if it keeps falling, I'm in the entire position. I remember thinking, why didn't I just do that? If I would have just done a manual trailing stop, you can use a regular trailing stop. But if I just keep pulling it down little by little, then I would have probably cashed out for at least $1,000 on this thing in just another 15, 20 minutes. So $359 to up to up $1,100 is a big difference for 10, 15 minutes. So basically what I did is started moving it little by little like this manually and just doing pieces of it in chunks. That makes sense? So that was a really long answer to your OCO question, but, and you could use an OCO. But what I learned by doing this is not only was it an expensive lesson, but I probably capitalized on another two or three hundred dollars of profit on a couple other trades I did yesterday by using this instead of doing it the way I was before. Just instead of saying, okay, take out a hundred here and a hundred here as it falls, I'm just putting a stop on that. Instead of instead of putting a hard order saying if it hits this point, get me out, I'm just trailing it with that small. Does that make sense? There what goes. Why not look at moving averages to time the bottom? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Well. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see if it's good or not. We don't know yet. <laughs> you got good ears, Brenda. Whoops. So we, we want to go back to the cues. You said it's moving. Is that what you're talking about? Okay, so the inverted head and shoulders is not playing out, obviously. It looks like, yeah, the market's starting to trail off again. No surprise. So let's see, I'm just gonna, here's another one too. Well, and this is where I'm kicking myself as well. I missed a $3 move on Chewy. This is the same thing the other day, right here on this day. If you can see, you can see my cursor moving, right? That day right there was the same as Oracle, except obviously it took longer, but I got short that somewhere up. I think it was on that roll reversal right there. Let me just drag this up there. This is the beauty of this is there's, there's one right there. Let me make this bigger, I think. Oh, that's not what I wanted. You know, getting back to the subject we're discussing is there's another absolutely textbook role reversal. And this is honestly, this is what I use. We got the support here, right? Let's get rid of that. That support level there, it breaks it first thing in the morning, then comes back up and taps that spot and then rolls over. So again, this is one you could, we don't have enough time on there. Where's my, give me a 30 minute. Uh, okay, that one will work. So we're up there. Looking for a potential target on that. Well, I got a lot of lines on there. I need to clean that up. So let's say, and just going back and using this as an example, right? Which is pretty much what we have to do here. Of 
course, there's, you know, how much time do we have? We've got 10 minutes. Okay. I'll hustle through this and then we'll go look at another one. Uh, so, right, we've got the support level here, support level here. And this day it runs up, comes back down, comes back down, tests it right here at the very end of the day, bounces a little bit. And the next morning opens up and crashes right through it and then comes back and does what? Uses it as a role reversal and rolls over and tanks. Which is exactly what we want to see, right? That's, that's exactly what we're looking for. That gives us trading opportunities all day long. And you can see there's, we can, we can find them everywhere. Like this one right here. This is what I'm watching as well. I don't know if I have any lines on there. So I'm taking that low right there. And looking for it to possibly do a roll reversal here. So if this is going to be the new resistance level, then we would put a stop right above it. Put it probably about right there. The target. Is this AIG? Yeah, okay. The target is the open of yesterday. That's what I put it as. It's a little conservative. This thing actually has the potential to possibly run. I mean, when you just run your cursor along and you look for stuff, there's also some here. And realistically, we could come down and close that entire window and come all the way down to here. Normally, I don't put all these lines on there, but I just put this down here, 4703 is a target. And the beauty is if you either trail it or you don't, either way, if it breaks right through this, then that's good. It's just gravy, right? It's just extra. So we'll make a trading plan out of this. There is the stop. In fact, let me put that on the left-hand side and move these around. I just like to be able to see things. And where is that? Give me a calculator. There's the stop. The target is 47.03. So 13 cents of risk for 40 cents of potential profit, right? So 47.43. I'm actually going to snag this line and steal it. Make it 47.43, make it orange, and it will pop up there. And there is the trading plan, which is sitting right at 47.43. And we're going to see if we can short this puppy right here. And we just got filled. So I just shorted 1,000 shares, if you were following along, obviously. Just shorted 1,000 shares. So we've got, what's it, 47.56? Hey, I just realized last time we did this coach's corner, remember the one we placed the, the it was AMD, if I remember right, put a trail and stop on it. And it was still going when we left class. That ended up making 60 bucks. We just lost 60 bucks on fetch. So I'm break even, right? <laughs> I don't even care. Honestly, the place, in my opinion, the place to get to in trading from an emotional standpoint is getting to a place where you literally don't care. It's like fetch doesn't affect me whatsoever. Doesn't, doesn't matter. And honestly, I got <laughs> one of those dings you heard was getting stopped out with an actual funded trade. So AIG, of course, right now, who knows what this is going to do. Forty-seven fifty-six. We've got to buy it, right? I'll put it, I'm just going to put the stop up there. Buy to close. Yeah, we'll just Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Did I put the wrong price? Whew, I did put the wrong price, huh? I put 46. I need 56. Good thing I got it canceled in time. That should have filled right away. 47.56. Okay, there it is up there. If it goes and hits it, what is it, six cents? Seven cents? Or is that 13 cents? Oh, 13 cents. Okay, it's going to cost me 130 bucks for the potential to make 400. The stock's directly following the pivot lines. 47.33 pivot. So right here, right at that, right. you're saying right at this little support level right here. 
<laughs> That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of technical analysis. You can use a lot of different techniques, a lot of different, different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Indicators. You can use a lot of different, you can do it a lot of different ways. And a lot of times the, the end result, I mean, Will's in patterns of the flash and he's in the class and he's always, he uses fibs. Rob's a big, big fib guy. I've played with fibs in the past and I like him. Nothing wrong with him. Nothing good, nothing more bad about him. But it's funny because he'll throw the fibs on there and say, well, you, the fib lines are exactly where you have support or resistance or this or that. Cause I use patterns. I use patterns, support and resistance and roll reversals and other, obviously other things. But um, the beauty is that you got to pick what works for you and what you like. If you like fibs, use them. If they work for you, great. If you like patterns, use them. And there's a lot of beauty in combining a lot of them. In fact, that's what Slumberjay was. We were talking about the other night, right? Wednesday night in the, in the live class. So they had a beautiful head and shoulders and we also had a following three methods. In fact, let's, you know what, let's, we got just a few minutes here. I'm gonna go to a daily chart on this one. All right. You know what, actually, never mind. I just realized I've got this here. Well, there's, there, <laughs> that's a good one to have. That's Apple, that vertical line right there. And for those of you that don't have patterns in flash, there is a, I do a pattern of the week. And on that vertical line right there, this trading plan is what I put up there with the symmetrical triangle. That was the pattern of the week for, what was that, the 18th? June 18th, I posted this for pattern of the week for Apple with this trading plan that's on there. And look at what just happened. In four weeks, it ran. The entry point was 134.31. Target was 149.50. Just hit it yesterday, day before too. There was, uh, who was it? Who was, somebody was mentioned the other night that they made, they didn't get the whole thing, but they got 22%. So that's another, another benefit to pattern uh patterns and flash you get you get one one actually i'm doing two patterns a week right now because their market's so mixed but this is one we were looking at the other night where you've got this beautiful textbook head and shoulders and then you've also got two you got a following three methods right there and you also have whoops another following three methods right there right the candlestick pattern along with the price pattern saying that this thing's probably going to continue and where's it at right now is it at the target yet 2809. So it's it's at 28 right there. So it's still got, but there's probably, there's tons of, not tons of volume yet, but we're still in the morning time. So lots of volume in the last couple of days. This thing's probably going to drop down to about what looks like about 27. 2740 is the first spot to be cautious of. And then 2610 is the target. So um, this is the beauty of combining price patterns and candlestick patterns. And even if, you know, we can go look at these charts. You look at Apple. Well, here's, where did, where did Apple go again? And this is exactly another role reversal thing since we've really only talked about it with um, horizontal lines, but it does the exact same thing with trend lines, right? It's whatever kind of support resistance line it is, doesn't matter. Here is a role reversal, right? The thing broke out to the upside. It broke out of the triangle. And granted, it was only one day, but it pulled back, tapped the old line and then rallied. They recognize that as a resistance level. And it happens all the time. Here's some, just looking at this uptrend, right? There's some there. And usually this is what you'll find a lot of times when it is trending, it rolls up. Same thing here. You've got that one. You got the resistance level there. It breaks out, comes back, taps it here, takes off, come back, taps it, runs. It's just, it's, it's an amazing, amazing thing to watch play out. And I imagine, I mean, y'all are obviously here and you've been doing probably technical analysis for a while at least, but it's still, even after over 20 years, it blows my mind. So it's uh, it's just it's just mind-boggling to me. So, but real quick, I'll just show you this just in the last minute or two we have, uh, just so you can see the tool. If you haven't seen this, if you haven't experienced it, this is the tool itself. It's on demand. It's inside your, your member's account page, right? And these are flashcards, which basically are just, I'll just click on the first one here. This is basically a training tool, just like flashcards in the old days, right? It's designed to train your eyes to see the patterns quickly and easily. And then there's over eight hours of video in here. There's, there's world reversal. That's the lesson, kind of what we talked about today. But And then round numbers, all this stuff. This is all basics. This is all foundational stuff that's very important. Uh, that, I think this is the one I told that story of the, my friend in New York. And then these are lessons all about patterns. 
each individual pattern, what to look for, what makes it stronger, what makes it weaker. Here's the recording of the video. So the classes that we do every two weeks, the live classes, they're also recorded. So if you can't make it to the live classes, you can go watch the recording of it. And quizzes. If you want to find out how much you know, take the quizzes. This is what I used to su suggest to people if you haven't had this tool or if you're new to technical analysis, go take the trial. The link's in there. Thank you, Amy. Amy just put the link in there again. You get a two-week trial, right, with just about everything we do. You get a two-week trial to go test drive it. Go test drive it. Take the quiz, basics of trends. It'll give you an idea of do I know enough? Do I have enough basic understanding, basic knowledge of technical analysis? If you pass every one of these with flying colors, maybe you don't need this tool. Use it for a couple of weeks. There's the pattern of the week. And if you don't want to keep it, don't keep it. No big deal. If you do, if you find value in it, then keep it. The pattern of the week there is there, what did I say? It was six. Okay, I posted on the 21st. It was, this is the one with Apple. Oh, shush. That guy's crazy. Maybe I went to that one first. But just, just to show you, you can see what's in here. There's the Apple, yeah. There's them getting to the trading plan. There it is right there. Same thing you're looking at on the right side of the screen. So I posted this video. It posted up on the 21st. The 18th is when I recorded it, and it, 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 uh, that was over the weekend. So I usually, I usually do it either Friday night or, or Saturday over the, over the weekend, and it posts usually on Monday. So, But either way, I mean, it, it didn't hit for a few days anyway. So the beauty is, is that, and I try to find candidates like this that will potentially pop in over the, the week or two after. So. so that's it. If you haven't experienced that, you haven't seen it, then... Take the free trial. And then you can join us in the, the next class. You'll have two weeks. So the next Wednesday night class, which is a week from Wednesday, you'll have free access to another hour just like this. Slumber Jay is about to pay for the whole course. <laughs> and you think you've done it four times since the last bill. Uh, I love that. M MU. All right, we'll look really quick. I just noticed we're two minutes over, so I got to hustle. Whoops, 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 I want that one. Will tells me that all the time. He pays for his subscription with the pattern of the week once or twice every quarter. That's what he says. I haven't verified it that, so you, you know, don't <laughs> I can't I can't confirm that. He's just saying it. But I don't have any reason not to believe him. You say micron? Oh, you mean on a daily. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice looking descending triangle. That's in a, I like that. That's in a, that's in a spot where it's just starting to break. Okay, oh, that's 77. Let's go just below 70, behind 77. Whoops. Should we throw a trading plan on it real quick? We're gonna do this real quick. For those of you who might be swing traders, not necessarily day traders. I like to use the day trading as um, a way to look at it because it's real time. You can see it happening. And in reality, whether you're trading a five minute chart or a daily chart is all the same, except for one takes a day to form, one takes five minutes to form. So that Oracle trade would have taken seven or eight days to, to trade instead of 35 minutes. Did we just get hit on it? Yeah, we just got hit on AIG. Took another loss, but no big deal. Law of averages, I don't care. That's the beauty of it, is when you utilize what you're about to see right here. This is why it's so important. AIG just got hit for another loss, right? 75.29 in, in that line here. But the beauty is the next trade very well could go in my favor and make up for both those two hits that I just lost, right? That's where, and, and when you get to a place... And that's one of the beauties of it is from an emotional standpoint, when the most important thing we need to do as traders is manage our emotions. From an emotional standpoint, knowing that the odds are significantly on your side, knowing that you only need one of your trades to go in your favor. And if you get hit on three or four of them and you get one, then you're coming out ahead anyway, or at least break even, then you start to not care. You get to a point emotionally where it's like, I don't care that I just got stopped out. I don't care that I just lost 130 bucks. And 60 bucks on another. I'm down 200 bucks today. Whoop de do. Because I go hit the Oracle and make 1200 tomorrow. 
You know what I mean? So it's one of those things that it, it is one of those things that help you dramatically reduce fear. And that's the ultimate goal is to manage our fear. Well, people say trade without fear. Good luck. I've tried it for years and you're never going to succeed. We're human beings. We live with fear. It happens. You got to learn to manage it. That's the best you're going to do. And by implementing risk reward and scaling in, scaling out, doing trailing stops, doing that, managing it, in, you know, in a lot of different ways, like we've seen today, those are the things that helps you to manage your emotions in an effective way. And that's what the ultimate goal is. So where's the link? Uh, DX, the, the link should be in the chat box there somewhere. Um, I know it's popped up on my side. I would hope that it's showing up there. If for some reason it's not showing up, then get a hold of support. Um, there it is. I don't know if it was. Yeah, it looks like it. it. It should be there in the chat box. Like I said, if for some reason it's not, either go to the website or just call in. Support team is awesome. They'll take good care of you. So, but there's one with, with Micron. There's a potential. If you want to go paper trade it, you can go play with it. Okay, you found it. Good. Awesome. Good. I'll see you a, a week from Wednesday then, right? Say hi. And there's also a, if, if you didn't, I don't know if you saw that or not, but there's also a, I think it's here. Maybe it's in the front one. No, if you go to the flashcards part here, then uh, you can send a message in too. If you have, that'll come directly to me. It'll send me an email, say you got a message, go respond to it. So I get to it as quickly as I can. So yeah, see, I can care less right now. I'm looking at my other machine and the one trade that I took a hit on is now being overtaken with the profit from another trade that's actually moving in my direction in a fast way. So that's the beauty of risk reward. That's the beauty of three to one. It helps you manage your emotions in a way that is hard to beat. So anyway, I've got to close out there. We're a few minutes over. Appreciate y'all hanging out, having some fun and uh, have fun out there trading. We'll see you in the, the next. Oh, good. There's a support email for the support team if you need it. It is fun making money, huh? You know what's fun too? Is getting stopped out. You know why? Because now I can go get into a trade that will make me some money. <laughs> when you get to that place, you've arrived. That's the ultimate goal as a trader as far as I'm concerned is get to a place where you are perfectly fine and almost happy when you get stopped out of a trade, where it does not phase you emotionally at all. If you can get there, you've arrived. And that's the ultimate goal. It was a good trade, exactly. Another thing, I, <laughs> that's another lesson inside patterns of flash. How do you define a good trade? And redefining a good trade mentally and emotionally will do you wonders. So go check it out. Appreciate y'all coming out, having some fun. Y'all take care. We'll see you uh, next month. God bless. Bye-bye.